What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you follow me on the channel or you're a subscriber, you already know this video is long overdue. I haven't made a video in like two years or close to two years. Um, the cars made a lot of changes, the shops made a lot of changes and I'm gonna show everything, just kind of get a recap video because I never really knew where to start again on making videos because so much has changed and I didn't really keep up with it. So for the newcomers and the guys that's been around for a minute, I think I've had a channel for like three years or something like that. Um, I kind of want to get everybody caught up on what's going on. Uh, so let's just get into it so I can kind of explain quickly to kind of get everyone back on to uh, on a track of where we're at with the thing. Um, again, the car is living. It is alive. It is well. Let me zoom back here. It is back. There we go. Uh, living and well. Um, again, a lot of things have changed and I'm going to try to sum this up pretty quickly to get us back on track where we were. Um, if you're new to the channel, uh, this is my 2003 Honda S2000. It's an AP1 car, F20 motor, uh, stock, stock trans, and it has an OEM reinforced diff by Justin Kelly. Uh, it's been through the stages. It went turbo on pump gas, making like 430, and then it went to ethanol, making just a little over 500, and then we bumped up base pressure on my 1300s, and now the car's making probably about 585 or so, something like that. Uh, the car's street tuned, so I don't have exact numbers, but you know, you look at what an F20 with this much boost, blah, 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 you add up all the, the criteria and you're gonna end up with a number. Also, my tuner does do like a, a virtual dyno, which is pretty dang close in comparison because I will say, now that I'm thinking about it, I did do a dyno day back in 2021. It was right after I went to, uh, well, uh, sorry, back after I went on to ethanol uh, in that following summer, I did do a dyno day, crazy hot. It was like 99 degrees, something like that in a shop. Uh, 50 bucks we were doing pulls I wanted to know so we put it on the dyno I think my tuner had told me 515 and no joke when I put it on the actual dyno I think it dynoed like 519 or something like that so really dang close for a virtual dyno which was very impressive to be honest um, so after that uh, I ran the whole season it was great had a lot of fun with the car uh, did a little bit of a uh, drag race stuff with it um, can't get too, too violently uh, crazy with it because, yeah, it is uh, still a stock trans. And, yes, it does have uh, a reinforced diff, but it's definitely not an 8.8. So when I launch the car, I just two-step, and then I basically just slip out pretty hard off the launch. I'm not dropping the clutch. I'm not really jumping the car out of the hole. But, you know, it's it's more for just having fun. I wanted to, I wanted to play with it. I wanted to have a good time. Uh I have the drag radials now, which is a new thing, and that's great because it holds power, no problem. Um, before um, the Toyos, you know, even a good third gear pull uh, with some uh, with not a lot of heat in the tire, something like that. Uh, sometimes it would still try to spin a little or step out a little, which was kind of sketchy. But with the uh, with the drag radials on there, it is nice to have that confidence and know that it's going to hold. Um, so yeah, I had a good time doing all that. It was fun. Um, didn't really have any issues until towards the end of the year. And that was a, a full season summer, with a spring, summer, fall. I'm just beating on the car on E85. Uh, just having a good time with it. Uh, again, this car was 178,000 miles, completely untouched. AP2 retainers on the exhaust side, and that was it. That's all I had done to the motor. Um, and then at the end of 21, October, it was right before, uh, right before um, Halloween, can't think. Right before Halloween, uh, I was coming home from a thing where I was picking up some parts from a guy. I just want to take the car out and cruise and enjoy it because it's getting close to the end of the season. I noticed the oil pressure had dropped quite a bit. Uh, it wasn't knocking, nothing like that. But when I stopped to idle, I noticed uh, it was down to like 8, 9 PSI at idle. And I'm like, okay, something's definitely changed. Um, I need to investigate. So I got the car home, drove it straight home from there, put it on jack stands, and sure enough, when I drained the oil, there was gold in the uh, in the drain pan or in the uh, yeah the drain pan. So sad to say it was a bummer, but at the same time, it's a long time coming with the motor making the power it's making with the miles that's on it because these motors are very very strong. They can definitely take you know 550, 600 horsepower no problem with a great tuner and. Uh, 
and just doing your diligence as far as servicing it and taking care of it. Um, I really think part of it is just a high mileage motor beating on it. Um, I had taken it to Nashville to Import Alliance, which was like a freaking four and a half hour drive and back. And I beat on it all the way there, beat on it all the way back. Um, and I think there might have been a little uh, dilution of the oil from the E85. And I think that was basically what wiped the bearings on my mains. So I lost, I think it was two or three main bearings there. And it wasn't horrible, it didn't eat the crank alive, nothing like that, but it was enough to drop oil pressure and for me to stop and wonder, hey, there's something that's changed, I need to look into it, and I found that. So I had pulled the motor out, tore it apart, um, cleaned everything up, I got a good used AP1 crank, um, and did it all here in my shop. Uh, I'm a mechanic. I've been a mechanic for 15 years or so. Um, so yeah, it's a little it's it's a little nerve wracking because you know the, the FRM liners are a little weird in this thing. But the the cylinder walls look great. They looked amazing. Everything looked great. It was just the bearing damage. So I opted to just pull the motor, tear it all the way down, uh, clean everything that you could never clean before, which was awesome. Um, and I just ordered everything through Honda, and I got all OEM Honda everything. I mean, I even replaced. The girdle bolt, bolts, the uh, the rod bolts, everything. Um, I cleaned the cylinder walls up with a Wiseco nylon hone and ATF. Um, guys have done that in the past. I did a lot of research before this. And again, my cylinder walls looked amazing, so I wasn't too worried about it. And again, it was like, hey, if this works, awesome. If it doesn't, then we're going to send it out. We'll build the block and we'll do that. But uh, it's been over a year now, and the car is still running great. Um, it has amazing oil pressure now at idle. Uh, it's like 23 to 25 PSI at idle when it's fully hot. Um, I run 10W40, and when I set my bearing clearances, I set everything up to like the loose end of OEM spec. So again, these F20s live very well um, on boost, especially if you're under like that 700 mark for a long time. But I did a bunch of other stuff too. I had a catch, uh, catch cam combo made by a buddy. Um, I did Brian Crower springs and retainers in the head. Uh, we also did, uh, I powder coated the valve cover. Um, a lot of like little dress up stuff, just cleaning stuff up, paying the intake manifold. Um, like I said, I just went through the whole thing. All brand new gaskets, seals, head gaskets, ARP studs. I just really went through it and spent the time and did it on, you know, on a budget that I felt comfortable doing. And luckily for me, um, it's been great. Oh, yeah, and I also did, uh, also did AP2 rings because they do have the updated oiling rings on those. And it's literally been, it's been great. The car is running awesome. Great compression, no smoke, no chatter, no nothing. Like, it is, it is awesome. Uh, did the modif uh, modified my TCT. I literally went through the whole thing. So it was really nice after having this car. Sorry, I blocked the camera. Uh, after having this car for almost eight years. Uh, just being able to go through it and know what I have now. Um, so yeah, so that was the motor. Went through it. It's been great ever since. Um, at that point, I also did the radium fuel rail. Uh, did that, and I ran a dash six feed, and I used the stock return. Probably should have did a dash eight feed, just for future. But realistically, like I'll be honest, everyone kind of has their goals for their cars. And I like to be somewhere where I can be comfortable with the car so it's not a full-fledged race car. So I can still take it places, do stuff, and feel comfortable and not have to worry too much about it. Um, realistically, for me, I want to just... I want the car to be about 650, 675 with a solid drivetrain on ethanol and just enjoy the car. Something that's going to live a long time. It can hold together. And if I got to do a little work, you know, on the winter time or pull ahead or something like that, cool. But it just pretty well runs without any hiccups through all the other, uh, through through the, the fun times, you know, when it's warm and you want to get out and enjoy the car. So, yeah, the motor's good now. It's nice to have, like I said, a fresh motor that I know what I got. I don't have to worry too much about it. Um, so all that's been great. Uh, the diff that Justin Kelly uh, from Kelly Racing did for me, amazing. Um, granted, it is not an 8.8, which obviously that is going to be a future upgrade. Um, but... With the OEM reforced diff, it gets rid of that crappy crush sleeve, which was always failing on me because 
with the car being loaded with the extra power, uh, it would just cause it would cause the crush sleeve to, I guess, basically distort, and it would add extra backlash. And then over time, not very long, um, the backlash would increase, and it would just eat the diff alive. So I was popping diffs in, you know, once a year. Now this past setup, it's been great. Like I said, it does. Uh, it lets me beat on it a little bit with the radials. I don't get too stupid with it because I do realize that it's not an 8.8. I can't just dump the clutch. I can't just beat on it like that. It's still a factory uh, diff housing, still factory caps, but it does have the uh, studs that are machined to the caps with lock nuts and the crush sleeves. So that makes that makes a big difference in comparison to the stock. So not saying it's bulletproof, not saying it's going to last forever, but it does do the job provided that you are understanding of how it's made and how it works and kind of work with it without being too crazy with it. But you can definitely do a lot more than what you would ever do on the stock diff. And I've proven that again, like I said, just kind of beating on it with the radials and being able to do a little bit of drag race stuff, uh, doing the burnouts and uh, two-stepping and jumping out of the hole. Again, not hard, but hard out on the clutch to where I was slipping and, uh, and it, it helped. Like I said, it did great. Um, so for 2023, um, I'm on transmission. This is number four that's in the car. I've had a hell of a time with the transmissions in these things, and that's normal with a boosted car, especially anything over like 500 horse. Um, they just, they're not designed to hold that kind of power. I keep losing second, I keep losing third, and it's not because I'm jamming gears. A lot of times it's in the middle of the pull, it lets go, or I think third is sometimes it'll uh the last one anyways was i lost a little traction in third and then when it snaps back on like you spin a little and you grab uh just that shock boom it messes up third so i put another stock trans in it and i've decided i'm done with the stock trans i'm tired of doing that i feel back when it was you can get a trans for like five six hundred dollars it wasn't that big a deal but now the transmissions have gone up to like eleven twelve hundred dollars for used ones and i'm just you already know like it's a it's it's insanity like you know it's going to break you know it's going to keep happening and you get tired of dealing with it and it kills the confidence of the of me in the car and it it just kills the fun you know obviously we could turn down but no way who's doing that so the goal is to grow the goal is to get better faster and obviously everyone has a budget and everyone only makes so much money uh that they want to spend on this toy um and that's really what it is because i just take it out and play with it and bring it home so for 2023, I'm going to be sliding into this setup. Um, I got a really good deal on a CD009 uh, transmission kit from Inline Pro. Um, came with the drive shaft and everything. And I also didn't want to deal with somebody's raggedy wore out transmission. So I did go to the dealer and bought a brand spanking new uh, 370Z transmission. Um, Pretty excited about it. I know there's a lot of hate for the CD009 transmissions in these cars because you lose the dual mass flywheel and you get a lot of noise. Honestly, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it other than I'm willing to accept the noise just so I can have some reliability as far as the drivetrain goes. Um, obviously, when you have the trans and you have the diff and each one is failing, it's really annoying and you're just constantly fighting a battle that you're never going to win. So, again, Inline Pro, uh, 350Z, 370Z, Z33, Z34, whatever, trans kit. And this is, uh, I'm going to open all the boxes up on another video. I'm going to show everything and explain everything. That'll be cool. Um, but it does uh, both trans, but obviously the 370Z trans is a little more refined. It's the same trans, but it has the upgraded synchros and blah, blah. So, updated part number, latest part number, whatever you want to say. It's the better option. So basically, this is the transmission you would get when you bought, uh, if you were to get, uh, if you had like a 2020 or the last year of a 370Z, this is the newest, latest part number for that. Um, still gonna be running my OEM upgraded uh, diff. I'm gonna do that until this one blows. When this one blows, I'm going 8.8. I'm tired of messing with it. But again, obviously, if money wasn't an object, then I would just buy it all now and do it all now. But little tiny bites. Um, and also, I didn't really plan on losing a motor the other year. But hey, we got past that. It's good to go. Like I said, I'm well over a year now uh, into this rebuild, and it's doing amazing. And I'm super, super happy that it worked out for me on this. Um, and again, later on down the road, because I don't really plan on selling the car, 
I will move into probably like the uh, the F24 uh, with the K-series crank and sleep block and all that. That will happen eventually when this one when this one goes. Uh, nothing lives forever, and especially when you're beating on it. So, yeah, dude, I'm uh, dudes, dudettes. I'm pretty excited. I know, again, I know the CD Trans is not the best transmission swap for this car, but with the price of the transmission, brand new, they're not horrible. Um, and then the the deal I got on the kit with the drive shaft that has the adapter to go to my OEM diff, and then when I take the adapter out, will fit an 8.8. I couldn't say I couldn't I couldn't say no. I couldn't just let it go because opportunities don't like that always happen and I was ready to pay cash and just move into move into a better trans setup. So that's gonna be what's coming up probably I'll probably start working on it in the next few weeks or so. I need to get started. I know there's trans set on work, stuff like that. And then today, actually I did order a brand new serial nine shifter for this transmission, which is supposed to be the best shifter for this transmission. And if you're doing the swap, it's going to give you the best chance at liking the swap. Um, like I said, it makes noise. It's going to be loud. It's going to be different. It's it's a foreign transmission in a car that it doesn't belong in. So you kind of got to accept some of the uh, things that come with that. And like I said, for the money I get in it, I'm willing to do that. Um, but yeah, guys, I just wanted to make a quick video just to kind of like recap. Um is there anything else I can think of? Not really. Uh, it's still, like I said, all the uh, upgrades and stuff that I didn't post. Um, I, may, I remember making a video when I did the AP2 bumper swap and painted it and all that stuff. And for all you guys that don't know, um, I've literally done every single thing on this car. I bought it completely stock, even down to the paint job. Like me and a family member of mine, we painted the whole car. Uh, I redid the bumper and painted the bumper. I mean, literally done everything. I've rebuilt the motor. I've changed transmissions. I've sent the diff off. I've well, I've blown three transmissions on number four, and I've blown three diffs. And now I have this uh, this upgraded unit, which is doing really well. Uh, the interior. I don't know if it's unlocked. Of course not. Um, the interior hasn't changed. It's all the same, but people haven't seen it. It's clean, stock. Uh, I got a buddy club seat, Momo wheel, and then the gauges. Um, that's pretty much it, which that's the way I like it because this car has really nice interior in my opinion. Um, that's pretty much it guys, like for where, what the car is and where it's at right now. Um, I just took it out for a drive this evening, took a little rip just to kind of like enjoy it before, uh, before it goes on jack stands and it goes under the knife. So we're going to drop the trans, uh, the trans that's in here now has only been in here for probably like five, six months, and I haven't really beat on it because I wanted it to live so I could take it out and uh, and sell it to somebody who needs one. Um, so the trans in this car right now is great, but I don't want to risk it anymore. I don't want to put any more uh, stress on it. I don't want to keep doing the same thing. I'm just ready to move on to the next thing. So the next thing we're going to do is get the car up in the air, pull the trans, and start doing tunnel work. That's pretty much it. I just wanted to get you guys caught up on that. That's the car right now. Oh. And of course, I forgot, um, when I did rebuild the motor, um, we uh, bumped up the base pressure on the injectors. And when I did that, I, uh, and when I rebuilt the motor, um, we went back, we did a tune, refresh, all that stuff. We bumped up the base, base pressure on the injectors. And now it's making like 580 or so, something like that, just under 600, right around that mark. Uh, and that's that's a good spot to be honestly like you're always chasing more power but realistically I think this thing at 650 with a solid drivetrain is going to be going to be the the bee's knees I'm pretty excited about just getting it to that point so other than that that's the car guys I'm happy to to like get everything out in the open explain everything kind of get caught up I kind of want to get back to making videos and I've yet to see a video on YouTube where anyone's documented or done a whole video series on doing the transmission swap. So I kind of want to show like the whole thing, like pulling the trans, doing the tunnel work, the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I think I'm going to go the route where I don't beat it in with a hammer like a psychopath because just swinging a Paul Bunyan for an hour or two under there just doesn't really sell, set right with me. If I'm going to, if I'm going to molest the car any more than it's already been molested, which I, it's not even those thing, uh, it's not even on a little bit it's not even on a factory paint job anymore. Um, I'd rather cut it out, tack in plates, and just try to do it as clean as I can. 
Um, yeah, so that's what's going on with the car. That's where we're at. Um, quick rundown of the shop since you guys haven't seen. Uh, if you haven't seen the shop, this is the shop. Uh, cleaned it up a little bit. The floors look like ass because well, I redid all that like six years ago and it failed. But uh, pretty much the same old stuff. I redid these doors here. I put a roll-up door in. No more stupid looking barn doors. That was a huge goal for me. Pretty excited about that. And honestly, for a 20 by 20, I've got heat. I've got AC. It's literally like 30 something degrees outside. And right now it is like 75, 78 degrees in here, which is awesome. And it could even get warmer. So 2023 guys, I'm pretty pumped. I'm really not pretty pumped. I'm really pumped. Uh, I know it's going to be a feat. I know this thing is going to be a little different or a lot of different. It's going to make some noise. It's going to do some stuff that isn't normal to this car. It's going to take away from some of the nice, smooth, quiet drivability, but having the the confidence to be able to beat on it and know that the trans isn't going to blow second or blow third or or anything like that anymore is i really think it's worth it also not to mention this is the single disc kit so that's another thing with the noise uh, a lot of guys complain about is the twin disc is so loud the drivability on the twin disc is not great and then some people are say oh it's fine it's great i've never drove a twin disc um but I can understand. I've heard twin disc. I've been in twin disc cars, but never personally drove one. They can be pretty. They can be pretty chattery, pretty loud. Um, but I know they uh, clutch masters make that 850 strapped. So once the twin disc is or the single disc in this goes or I wear it out, I am going to move into that 850 strapped setup. But for the time being, having the single disc is definitely going to make a difference as far as the noise. So. That's pretty much it, guys. It's nice to catch up. It's nice to make a video. I know this was just talking. It's kind of boring, but I kind of had to get you caught up so that we could actually uh, move forward and make other videos so you guys know what's going on. Um, and that's it. So I'm not going to waste any more of your time. I hope you guys have a great uh, have a great new year. I hope you guys start out with a great new year. 2023 is going to be awesome for me. That's the goal. Um, hopefully, you know, things go. It could, it could go terrible. It could go terrible. But I would assume it's not. I, like again, guys, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put everything I got in, into this thing for 2023 that I purchased uh, on my budget, and I'm just gonna work with what I got, and I'm gonna be happy with what I got because I'm excited to be doing this to begin with. So, love this car, love this car, love this car. Super excited to uh, to move into its next phase. Um, honestly, cannot wait to get started and do second gear burnouts. So. Thank you guys for watching. Watch out for more content. I'm really going to try to get behind this camera some more and post up what I'm doing so you guys can see what's good. Thank you again, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.